Hey there YouTubers, this is an Australian meat pie. I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's vegan, but wait, 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 wait. You can make it regular. Uh, what you see before you is gonna turn into something called Australian meat pie. It's gonna be awesome. This version has Beyond Meat in it. If you don't want it to be vegan, just put hamburger in it. Nothing else is really gonna change that makes it vegan. These are onions that are already diced up. So Australian meat pie. We were watching something on somewhere and heard about it. And we've gone in and found a couple, three different recipes. And we'll probably share that in the description block. All right, YouTubers. Here's a bunch of the ingredients. Himalayan pink salt. We will use as much as that as we tell you. Black pepper. Garlic powder. White pepper? White pepper is in this. Onion powder. That's smoked paprika. Smoked paprika. This is Annie's organic Worcestershire sister sauce. We're going to use tamari. And we got some liquid smoke. We have some paprika. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff. In the past, I've done some of these where we use a bunch of fancy little dishes, you know, and it ends up becoming more of a heartache to get the stuff out of the little dish. So we're just going to tell you how much of everything we're using. Italian seasoning. We need some Italian seasoning. You can see this takes quite a bit. So the easy way to change this is, I'll inc what I'll do is I'll find a normal recipe for Australian meat pie that's not veganized, and I'll put that down in the description. So that if this meal interests you and you don't want to do it vegan, you can end up having the same meal non-vegan. And I'll send you the other ones so you can have them both. Yeah, yeah, we'll put them all in there. And the last ingredient is some ground sage. So, like I said, all these things here are going to turn into an Australian meat pie. We'll be back. Like in a second, you're just going to, I'm just going to, and we're going to put the onion in. There's some, a little bit of oil in there. Yep. In goes the Beyond. Was there a little bit of lentils in there as well? Yes, there was. There's a tiny bit of lentils because Beyond packages are smaller than regular meat packages. So I'm guessing you, you made the difference up with some lentils, right? Well, yes. Okay. Okay, here we go. That is a tablespoon. That's the Worcestershire sauce. It's, One tablespoon. It's vegan. Tamari, right? Yep. This is soy sauce, basically. It's just wheat free. And that's a tablespoon of that. That's a half a tablespoon. That's why it's yes. done twice. Yes. You can just talk all you want to. Mm. What if I don't want to? Then don't talk. <laughs> liquid smoke and actually we have to get some more of that. Woo! Oop, there's liquid smoke. Uh, half a teaspoon. And a little extra liquid smoke. <laughs> Two teaspoons of paprika. This is like a pasty from the UP but not. And if you watched you know I like me some pasties. Mm -hmm. Onion powder and garlic. So there's the onion. How much was that? Two teaspoons. And here's the garlic. Gotta refill that. Perfect. Yeah, we'll make it work. How much? How much was that? Two teaspoons. Himalayan sea salt. How much of that goes in there? Um, a half of a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. There you go. Yeah. Now, this is the white pepper, and it's supposed to be a half teaspoon, but I'm just... You can eyeball it. I'm just going to eyeball it. Three more. Ooh, that smells really good. Yeah, it does. Mm. My job is to mix. Yeah, you do that. That does smell good. What's that? 
black pepper. How much of that? Half teaspoon. <laughs> and it's it says it's supposed to be cracked, but my hands are tired from cracking the white, so I'm just gonna I'm kidding. I'm just lazy. <laughs> That's the only white pepper I have. Okay. Mm, two teaspoons of Italian herbs. So this is that Italian seasoning. And we're gonna use two of those. Ooh. Yeah, and then the last one is sage. There's a lot of flavors going in here. Yeah, there is. You should have smell a vision. This smells really good. There's the sage. Which there seems the sage. strange to have Italian seasoning mixed with sage, but this is an experiment. We shall see. We shall see. Alright, so that's all the ingredients. This is the part where I stop recording and we come back in a second. Now we're going to make a gravy that goes with it. Okay, and that was just a half a cup of corn that went in. Yep. The recipe's a little confusing, but we're pretty sure that corn's supposed to go in. I feel like I should turn this down. Yes, you should. I'm, I'm about to mix some broth to make gravy. Okay. Because there's gravy. So we're going to do some other stuff What that we'll show you in a little bit. Okay. We going? Yep. So this is just some no beef better than bouillon. It's supposed to have vegetable broth or stock. We're just using the rest of this jar because it's about empty. And if you were making it non-vegan, you could just use better than beef bouillon. Right. They make it both vegan and non-vegan. Yep. So and it's surprisingly how much this tastes, tastes like. Yeah. Like it's very weird. And there's some flour in there. How much flour? About a tablespoon, but I put a little more in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to mix that up, and what are we doing with that? We're going to put it in here. Oh, it's going right in there. Yeah. Oh, I get to stir again. It's going to make like a like a gravy. Or it's a bouillabaisse. <laughs> it's not a bouillabaisse. That's not what that no, is. No, that has fish in it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Fish. Okay. So, slide this back. Okay. Can you see inside the pan? I can. Okay. So we're just going to turn this up and... Let it simmer or something? Yep. And it's going to get thick. Okay. Because the flour does that. That's correct. Assuming it does what it's supposed to do. So what's going on now is that is still simmering like you said. And here's something that's funny. Um, I've been to Australia. And I've never had an Australian savory meat pie. So, this is kind of cool that I'm doing it here. And we have, we're getting ready. We're going to use pie crust, pre-made pie crust, vegan style. And you can do the same with non-vegan ones if you want to do that. Or if you're, if you're feeling the need, you can make your own. But we went with pre-made. We're cooking down and we're giving a little taste. It is barbecue, you're right. Weird. I like it. Yeah. Where's you getting the barbecue from? Uh, I don't know if it's <laughs> smoked paprika or what. Uh, I'm still stirring. I asked how you're going to do this, and she's like, Have you never seen a pie made before? So, yeah. We are using, uh, these are going to be in like uh, cupcake pans. That's what it called for. Okay, what she's doing now off camera is out of that pie crust, she is making the tops. And the rest are going to go into this. And now it's starting to thicken up like we want it to. You can see that. Yeah, it's going to be good. What we're doing now is we're putting the bases. To, I'm not we, it's she. We might be able to sneak a couple more in there. Well, we have to see if we have enough filling for... I just guessed it was going to make five. That's okay. what talented hands can do. Right. I'm just going to do these first and okay. see if we, have, if we have enough meat, then... So after we made this, I reached out to an Australian friend I have, and uh, I'll share some of the stuff I was told during that conversation. We'll be right back. We make two batches. Except we don't have any more. Well, 
I think I have more pipe left still in the freezer, so I guess we could. Or we could make a big one with the rest of them, like a little pan or something. We could. The beauty of editing. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. Boop! Now she's going to expertly well, seal the two together. Well, Trust me, it'll be expertly. Oh, all right. We all know those kind of people that have a lot of talent at something, and they're probably a little too humble for their own good. This is expertly done. Beat this up for you. Unless you've got stuff you want to say, you can say nope, whatever you I don't want. have anything to say. <laughs> for once in my life, aren't you surprised? I am surprised. I have nothing to say. Shocked in the hall. Shocked in the hall. They're not pretty. Like I had wanted them to be. They're pretty. Yeah? Yeah. You know, cooking perfectionists. This one we're folding because I made it a little bigger. We could make one in a burrito. That's what we could do. We could fill all the stuff inside a burrito. And fry it in a pan? Fry it in a pan. Oh. Okay. That might not make it into the videos. But that's my, my favorite what happens with the leftovers. Like deconstructed Australian meat pie turned into an Australian meat burrito. A burrito. I want a burrito. This is why it is very difficult, YouTubers, to make cooking videos. Why? Well, because you have a. You know, when you watch the Food Channel, they got real cameras there and different angles and shots. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to just do something off a tripod, it can be a little bit challenging. Well, and here's another challenge. I never made this before, so sure. I can't... You know, a lot of times when they make recipes, they've made it 20 right. times, you know. And another shock on those shows, usually the people that are the stars didn't really cook the stuff. Yep. Let me get one out of the oven that we cooked earlier. They didn't Ooh. cook that. They had a team of about 10 people cook, cook 20 versions of, and they took the one that looked perfect out. This is real world stuff. <laughs> real world Australian meat pie. Yeah. You want to try this? I'm good at this. This is what I used okay. to do in a previous get, life. <laughs> you got to put your finger under there. See? These YouTubers, they know. I used to be professional at whatever this is called. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. You're doing fine. Okay, I was going to slit those with a knife, but you poked them with the fork. Yeah. So they won't explode. Look good. Put some salt on there, I think. Yep. Be careful, it comes out fast. That's how my grandmother taught me how to do it. Put a little bit of salt on this. Mm -hmm. I don't need a lot of salt, so I don't think we need too much. And we're back recording. Last second finishing touches. Well, I don't like this. I'm afraid it's going to all bubble out, so... We're going to do that. It's really hideously ugly. That's not my best. These part. are not hideously ugly. They are uh, beautiful. Okay. In the oven they go. In the oven they go. For 20 minutes at 400 degrees. With this are going to be mashed potatoes. And that's what I'm doing now. You don't need to see making mashed potatoes. They're really small so they should cook quick. We're going to mash them when we're done. Hey, while you can't see stuff that's going on, a good safety tip, they didn't tell us to do this in the recipe, we put a piece of foil over the Australian meat pies in the oven so that they won't burn. They were starting to brown and thought maybe it could get to burning, so aluminum foil or tin foil or Australians would say aluminum foil will do you good. Oh, and as I just said, I put a piece of aluminum foil over the top I just laid it across. Okay, I watched her lay a piece of aluminum foil across the top. Okay, here comes part of the cooking that I'm qualified to do. Those are peas. These get used in this. 
that's a masher, and I'm going to mash peas. You don't need to see peas get mashed, do you? But that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but I saw this in a different recipe that you put a... Actually, what was it? It was like a restaurant that served this. Okay. And it had um, mashed potatoes on the top of the pie and then mashed peas on top of the mashed potatoes. Yeah, that's what we saw. And then gravy. Whoa-oh. See, maybe I'm not qualified to do this. <laughs> And then we'll come back when I'm more qualified. Okay, we'll go back to mashing. And you want to finish your story? Uh, what was I oh, restaurant. Uh, yes, it was. Um, I saw. Where did we see that? I don't even remember now. Anyway, it was a restaurant that was serving these, and they served it with a scoop of mashed potatoes on top, and then mashed peas on top of that, and then. At gravy. some point in time, there was gravy. So that's what we're doing here. Oh. We have some leftover mushroom gravy. We have some leftover mushroom gravy, and that's what we're going to use. Yeah, I'm just going to thin that out a little. Okay, that's potatoes. Or <laughs> potatoes. Potatoes get mashed next. That's peas get mashed. That's enough of that stuff. All right, here we go with the construction of the Australian meat pie. <laughs> that is not ice cream. <laughs> that is not. That is beautiful yellow potatoes. Mm -hmm. My Aussie friend was actually surprised I'd never had okay. this. I was told this way here is how mom would make it when she wanted to be fancy back in the day. Mm. <laughs> Looks like a sundae. <laughs> the mushroom gravy all heated up. I think Australians... They say you can put ketchup on this. Much, again, like a pasty. So maybe this is the uh, no self-respecting youper will eat a pasty with gravy on it. Maybe, maybe no self-respecting Aussie will eat a uh, meat pie with gravy on it. We don't know these rules. We know the youper rule. There's two on this one. I guess and this one's mine. I was told what you got on the right there back in the day you would get at get petrol stations or footy games, you know, a good meal on the go. So much like pasties in the UP. Ooh, don't fall apart. Okay. <laughs> now it's time for gravy. Again, this is the fancied up version we're finishing with. How's that look? Okay, now we're going to eat this. Yeah. That looks good. Mm -hmm. When I spoke to my Aussie friend, she reminded me that they don't eat cats there in Australia, so they don't put ketchup on anything. They use tomato sauce, which, you know, we pronounce things and have different words for a lot of things in different countries. And in Australia, ketchup is tomato sauce, and tomato sauce here is spaghetti sauce there. All right, here we go. Taste test. I feel like I need a knife. They have rice a rizzo, not rice a roni. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a big bite. That's a big bite. So hot. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Mm hmm. Yeah. If it called for oregano in Australia, you would use oregano. Somebody else would like that. You can see the mushroom. I really miss all the cool Australian sayings and pronunciations. Mmm. Australian meat pies. That's a thing. What do you think? I like it. Tell the peoples. It's After pretty, you take another good bite of it. Well, that's pretty tasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell the people. I think... What do you think? I'd make it again. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Anything you would change? Yes. Less salt. You think? Mm-hmm. I don't use a lot of salt, and I don't think it's too bad, but yeah, maybe a little... Well, because... Well, you talk. Well, when you taste the meat by itself, it's really noticeable that it's over-salted because that soup base is pretty salty, as is the tamari and the um, Worcestershire. So with all of that in there, I think to add salt on top of it is probably a little bit too much. Okay. Um, I think in this case it works out because we didn't salt the potatoes when we cooked them. Right. If the potatoes would have been salted, it would have been felt a lot saltier. Yeah. So I think it's it's 
balanced a little bit because of that. I, I think I would rather salt the potatoes and not add salt to the filling. It's not bad. It could Maybe there's a tiny bit too much salt, but... It is. Okay, but it's mm -hmm. darn good. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. You can make this at home pretty... Well, I probably would have a hard time doing it, but if you got somebody that's got skills, you can do it. You can have an Australian meat pie. That's pretty darn good. As I said, I've been to Australia before, so Aussie, 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 oi, 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 for all the Aussies out there. And if you happen to be a, an Australian watching this, if we did anything wrong because we don't know any better, put in the comments if... If there's a better way to make these, I think they're darn tasty. It's kind of like a deconstructed pot pie, don't you think? Mm hmm But it's good. That's good. All right. That should be it. We'll see. I have an idea that might be rude. We'll see if I tag that on the end. If I do, cool. If I don't, have a great and wonderful day. All right, I'm doing what I told you. So that's the meat, that's the potatoes, and that's the peas. I'm going to put some gravy on it. And we're going to turn this Australian meat pie into an Australian <laughs> cooked burrito. And we'll come back in a second. Now I want to start out with any Aussies that might be watching it. If me making this into a burrito is an insult, I apologize. I humbly ask your forgiveness. I don't know how important a dish this is to everybody, but we had enough meat left over that we didn't want to make any more of the whole thing, so I said, let's just make it into a burrito. It sounds stupid, but we'll see. We put all the same stuff in there. I might put uh, gravy over the top of it, too, so don't mean to insult anybody. All right. Made it into a nice, pretty burrito. I'm gonna try it. Look at that. It's beautiful. Hold on. So there we go. I put some gravy over the top. Mmm. I knew it was gonna taste good because it already tasted good before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. And we got more. Oh, I decided that they said to eat it with ketchup, so we should try it that way. Just to see. Okay. Okay. So, hmm? better with the mashed potatoes and gravies, you think? I think so. Here no offense go. again to any Aussies. I'm going to give you some. But, it, you know, it's the same as doing to Youpers. I'm going to get fed here. It's still good. Yeah. I'm doing the pasty comparison again. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, mm -hmm. if you put gravy on a pasty for a Youper, you might get punched in the neck. Right? Every place I've ever been says nobody eats it with gravy, only tourists. So I don't know. If you're Australian, tell us how you guys eat it. But hope this was helpful. Again, recipe links are in the bottom. And we hope you enjoy. You don't know. All right, now i got to go finish my burrito. <laughs> if I haven't insulted Australians enough, I got some sriracha. Put some sriracha on this last bite of it. Try and make a smiley face. It's kind of a smiley face. See if it'll all hold together long enough for me to eat it. Here we go. Mmm! I haven't been eating as much sriracha lately, but it's, it works on there too if you want it spicy. Or spicier. Depending on your sriracha taste buds. That's good. All right, I have to add one little last thing. As we kept eating it, I had said, well, maybe you could use a little less salt. It's salty. Once you've eaten, I've eaten two and a half of them in this burrito. I would do what you said and, and take the salt, the added salt out. Yeah. And also, you had said maybe a little bit less of the Italian seasoning. I think it's a little, it just tastes a little too much over seasoned. Yeah, so maybe cut that in half. But other yeah. than that, it's still very good. And I think if we cut the salt back a little bit, it might be perfect for our taste buds. Make this yourself and see what you think. And have a great and wonderful day.